Isn't the Lord good? Amen. Y'all may be seated. Thank you, musicians. Thank you, everybody. I'm excited to be here this morning. Well, I'm excited for life every single day. I ain't going to even keep saying that. I'm just excited every single day. I mean, he give me life. Anybody excited about life? He said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Thank you for the baddest band in the land. Thank you, sir, for helping us out today. Jeremiah, thank you. Amen. But man, the Lord is so good. Uh, what y'all been up to? Y'all been up to Jesus? Y'all been all right? I, I think today uh, we're going to learn something today. You know, the scripture, you know, say line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. I believe our church is a teaching church, even though I get so excited sometimes I want to jump around running all that stuff but I, my main thing is I want to make sure you leave here with something that you have learned a nugget that you can apply to your life we talked about application last week a little bit and then we went into it more on Wednesday night live Bible study which we have every Wednesday uh, what is it 7 30 on Facebook live but I want you to uh, go to your Bibles the Romans I mean not Romans Hebrews the 12th chapter you guys going to learn something today this is faith city. If this is faith city, then we need people that live by faith. The scripture said the just shall live by faith. That means that you've been justified. You've been born again. You have been saved. So we supposed to live by faith. Everybody got that? Are you sure? So if we supposed to live by faith, how come we don't live by faith? So we supposed to live by faith. We are what, what people call us Christians. That's one term, right? Right. And another term is believers. Right. So that means we are believers. So how are we believers that don't believe? How are we non-believer believers or believers that non-believe? Does that make sense to you guys? Because I want to make sure that when you leave here today, that something click on the inside of you and something changes that you don't have a choice but start to live by faith. Because you have been leaning on crutches. You've been leaning on people. You've been leaning on your education. You've been leaning on your money. You've been leaning on your own wisdom. And sometimes it just doesn't work out. What happens when all else fails? Who do you lean on? See, here's the problem. When everything fails and everything doesn't go right, then we lean on God. But what happens when we lean on him at that point is so drastic. It's so dire. It's so uh, you are in a desperate situation. So now you're hoping that God come through. You're not believing that God's going to come through. But let's fix that because he's not coming through. He already came through. So when he said it was finished, it was done. So he ain't going to come through. I know you've been praying, Lord, come through. See me. No, he ain't going to come through and see you. He already came through and he already delivered you. So when he saved you, the Greek word for save in certain scriptures means sazo, which means your healing. That means your prosperity. That means your deliverance, your welfare and protection. Somebody say amen. So that means when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you didn't just didn't get your name written uh, to go to heaven, but you already been healed. So when you be praying and believing God for your healing, you should say, Lord, I thank you that I'm already healed. You shouldn't pray and say that, Lord, please heal me. You should say, I am healed. Don't say, Lord, bless me. I'm already blessed. It shall be given. It shall be given unto you good measures, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So what men give into your bosom. That means that God is going to send somebody to bless you. And this is why I always tell you all the time. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. This is why I tell you all the time, you better love everybody and stop despising people because you never know that hello or ignoring them is the the person that supposed to be your blessing. So God's going to send somebody in your life. That's how he blesses people. It's nothing that falls off the sky. He, he sends people to bless you. He sends people in the administrative office to bless you and look at your resume. It just highlights better than everybody else. Uh, come on. He look at the board of education and admission and he, he touched somebody hard in there. And, you know, and, and they just look at your application and he say, well, okay, we're going to let them in. That, that's called favor. That means you may don't qualify for a thing, but if you start trusting in God, it's a trust. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he's going to direct your path. I'm telling you, it's better when God direct your path than you trying to direct your own life. I'm telling you, I've been there. I got the manuscript. It's in my house. I burnt it over 10 years ago because what I'm trying to tell you, your ways is not his ways. 
His thoughts are not your thoughts. But in the New Testament, it says that now you have the mind of Christ. So the problem is you have his mind, but your thought pattern. That's why I, I'm preaching. I don't even know. We're going to get in the scripture in a minute. That's why it's so imperative. We've been talking about applying God's word. This is why it's imperative. The Romans 12, where it said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds. There's certain things you can't do for God, even though you know to do it, you can't do it because you have not uh, took the time and renew your mind. It said, be ye transformed so there needs to be a transformation in your life and that word transform in the Greek means metamorphosis where you see a, 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 a caterpillar turn into a butterfly isn't it amazing how a caterpillar the thing looks so ugly end up looking so beautiful because it wasn't mad it wasn't upset that they had to go through a process and be pruned it cannot talk to somebody and be hidden for a while because you know they, they be in that little web thing and they be hidden for a while and sometimes you want everybody to see you and sometimes there's a season where God needs to hide you so he can do some shifting and doing some things in your life. So now when he promotes you, you come out fly like a butterfly. I'm preaching better y'all say man because what I'm trying to teach you today that y'all better learn how to live by faith only because when you live by faith only, you ain't got to worry about stuff. You know that God has already orchestrated everything. You making plans and he already finished. Am I talking to the right house today? You making your vision for 2024 at the end of the year and God had a vision for you since 2020, since 2021, 2022, 23, 24, 25. We can go all the way to 30. All you have to do is yield to God. It's a finished work. Where we say go? Hebrews 12. We're going to go there. But I'm trying to teach you guys something that we got to learn how to trust God. It's so hard out here to trust people. And trust everything else. But if we can learn how to trust God. And I'm going to tell you something today that's going to might ruffle your feathers a little bit. I'm just going to paint a picture and show you where you are. Because we shouldn't keep talking about faith. Oh, I'll get to it in a moment. Look at this. Hebrews 12 and 1 says this. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us so you got to lay some stuff aside you know it's amazing to say weight and the sin is not just sin people wouldn't talk about sin but there's weight there's some things you carry too that you don't need to be carrying so he said let us set aside weight and the sin it's amazing when jesus went to people he was like you know your sins are forgiven then they could be healed because there's two things i don't know why i'm going here but let's just preach here there's two things see sin will make you feel so condemned that you don't feel right to receive from god i'm helping some people today you heal and make sure you didn't sin about something two years ago and you still praying for forgiveness. And this is why you can't receive from the Lord because condemnation, the Bible said condemnation kills. So we're trying to fight this thing for forgiveness. And that's why when Jesus showed up sometime, he said, your sins have been forgiven. He had to remove the condemnation so they can receive him. And a lot of you guys, because you don't understand faith and you don't understand salvation completely, and we're going to do a Bible study on salvation on Wednesday because the Lord put in my heart to teach about it. Because we don't understand salvation completely, we stay in condemnation. Now, how are you going to receive something from God when you feel like you don't deserve it? See, that's what condemnation does. He, it makes you feel so guilty that when you come to church and lift your hands, condemnation tells you, well, you know what you did yesterday. You know what you did last week, so how are you worshiping? How are you lifting your hands? How are you dancing? How are you shouting? Because I, I, I repented. And, he, and when I do that, he, he cast it. He, he, he don't even remember it anymore. So what the enemy does and what yourself does and bring it back to your own remembrance. And then God's trying to get you to receive stuff by faith, and you can't receive it by faith because you're so condemned. That's one thing. The second thing we do with sin is suppress it. Meaning that at one point in time, things were wrong in your life. You wouldn't do it. You wouldn't say it. You wouldn't go there. And now what happens is you suppress it so much that now certain sins in your life don't even affect you because you suppressed it so much, so deep that there's no condemnation. There's no, uh, uh, no feeling of, uh, I, I, I disappointed God or anything like that because you suppressed it so much. So what the writer said here in Hebrew, he said, let us cast aside every weight and the sin, which easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before so he said don't be quick to do stuff a lot of us in a race to, to get to the next level to be promoted whatever it may be and he says do this run it with endurance 
take your time with this. Come on. Yeah, y'all listen to me. So he's saying we have to run this race with patience. It's not a sprint. It's more like a marathon. The race is not given to the swift and the strong, but those who endures. I know you've been saved for so many years, but have you been enduring? How you been really trusting the Lord? <laughs> now, I love verse 2 says this, and this is where you got to get to. He said, looking unto Jesus. When we talk about faith, I hate to say it, but we made faith like faith is God. Come to try, I got to get my faith up. I got to operate in faith. We talk so much about faith, sometimes you don't even mention Jesus. And this scripture says here, looking unto Jesus, the author, meaning the beginning, and the finisher, which is the end, of your faith. The problem is people that's trying to grow in faith or live by faith is trying to do it without looking at Jesus. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. I do believe that. But do you also believe that the word is Jesus? See, we are separating these two. And this is why we can't operate by faith because we start making faith God. Everybody want to live by faith. Everybody want to operate by faith because of miracles, signs and wonders, promotion. They just want to believe and trust God. But the scripture says, look to Jesus. Remember the scriptures we read last week when we talked about Jairus daughter, they went to see who? Jesus. The man at, at the pool, he had to look at Jesus. The lady with the issue of blood, she said, if I could just trust to him and his garment, I'm not worrying about the people. I just got to find Jesus. See, when you attach your life to Jesus, faith will automatically connect to your heart. The problem is we're trying to get faith without Jesus. What, what I mean by that? He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So we're trying to get faith and build our faith. And I'm, I'm going to talk about that another day because we don't have to build our faith. We already have all the faith we need. But that's another Sunday. But what we're doing, it says, look into Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down in the right hand of the throne of God. See, a runner has to have a goal or a prize to press toward. Jesus should be our example and should occupy our focus on him. If we are in focus on Jesus, our faith will never be complete. Are you hearing me today? If we take our focus off Jesus, our faith will never be complete. This is why you're, you're not complete in faith. You are, but not in your application. There's so much going on in life. And, and, and life and situations, and we take our all eyes off of Jesus. One of the things that I don't like that I despise is when people come to me, uh, this is some years ago, I haven't happened re re uh, recently, they was like, say, oh, thank you for healing me. And I'm like, no, 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 let's get this right. You already been healed, number one. Jesus did the work. I just stood in agreement with the word said. I just looked to Jesus, the word of God. See, when you start looking at Jesus and see even, see, here's the problem. All right, what do you see this as? And be real. You see this as the Bible, right? The word of God. But when you read it and look at it, do you really see Jesus? See, that's the problem. We see the word. We see the Bible. Oh, this is so good. But you're not seeing Jesus. This is a big difference of what I'm saying. I know y'all don't think it is, but it is a difference. When you're looking in the Bible and you're looking in the Word, are you looking in the Word just to get knowledge? Or are you looking to see Jesus? Because everywhere in the Bible, you will see Jesus. And the problem is we're not seeing Jesus. He's everywhere. From Genesis to Revelations, you can find him. Let us make man. Who is us? Didn't say let me. He said let us us. So it was already God, Holy Spirit, and Jesus at the very beginning. Where did he get the image to make man? Jesus is already there in God. So when he was birthed into Mary, into Mary, came into Mary and birthed out, there was already an image of who he was. 
So we're, the problem is we're missing seeing Jesus in everything when it comes to our walk with God. We see church but don't see Jesus. See, when we see church, we see a building. We see people, we're coming together. But when we see Jesus, there's an overflow. What we come to church for? To magnify Jesus. To worship Jesus. To serve Jesus. We're singing for Jesus. I'm preaching about Jesus. When he become magnified, when he become exalted, then everything else becomes small. But our problems became so big because we stopped looking at Jesus and start looking at the problem. The doctor tell you something, your job tell you something. You call five to ten people on the phone and talk about the problem. This is why your faith can't be consistent. Because he said, look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. You got Jesus on the boat, D. They focus on the wind and the way. No, hear me. Hear me because you're laughing. But you got Jesus on the inside. And you focus on, on the winds and the way. They got Jesus at the bottom of the boat. Instead of them saying, we're going to be good because Jesus is on the boat. They looking at the storm and the way. Instead of you and I saying, we're going to be good because Jesus live on the inside. We looking at the storms in the way. Reason being, we had a moment. The same moment when my man got off the boat. As long, come on, he kept his eyes on Jesus. He didn't sink, but when he took his eyes off Jesus, he begins to sink. It's the same way with believers. We are not complete in faith and stay in faith because we take our eyes off Jesus. Are y'all learning something here today? Our minds are like magnifying glasses. Whatever we focus our attention on becomes bigger and more dominant in our lives. Whatever we fail to focus our attention begins to shrink in the importance and the influence in our lives. We'll remain the knowledge, but the impact of the knowledge diminishes because what we're focusing on. You know, everybody got all this word. Been in church for years. Know about Jesus. Know about the word. Know John 3.16. Everybody know John 3.16. If you don't, I know you've seen it in the football game. But because our focus, we stop looking at him. It starts to diminish our impact of the knowledge we have. The word looking in the Greek means to consider attentively, to turn your eyes away from other things and fix it on the thing. Oh, my God. Do you really turn your eyes away? From everything else and fix it on Jesus? When there's a problem, see, see, you have to condition yourself. Am I helping y'all a little bit? You got to condition yourself. Look, it said, it says this in Hebrews 5, 14. And it says, but solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is those by reason who use their senses. Meaning your mind perceiving and understanding the thing to to exercise. Here's the crazy thing what it says, Granny. In the Greek, it means to exercise naked. Not physically, meaning get everything else off your mind. If you got too much of stuff on your mind, then you won't be able to discern what is good and what is evil. So when he's saying looking away from something, he means become oblivious. Let it become naked out of your mind and just focus on Jesus. Because that is the author and the finisher of your faith. If you in here today want to complete faith and always operate in faith, always keep your eyes on Jesus. I don't care what the situation is. I don't care what's coming up against you. I don't care what it is, what storm, you name it. Keep your eyes on Jesus. But, but pastor is big. I don't care how big it is. You know why it's big? Because you made it big. It's not that big, but it's, you don't know what I'm going through. I don't care. It's not bigger than Jesus. Your focus has been on the thing and the storm. So you, at first it started like a little snowball. 
You know when you was a kid, you take a little snowball and you make it, and you keep rolling and rolling and rolling, and you keep rolling, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and you make a snowman because you kept rolling it and keep rolling. That's what happened with those things. You keep talking about it. You keep thinking about it. You keep meditating. Then you write it in your journal. Girl, please, bro, stop. Man, you're writing about it. No, listen to me. You're writing about it. Where your focus at? On the thing. Do you know that thing wasn't that big five years ago, but it's bigger now? The devil ain't make it bigger. You did. Because you stopped looking at Jesus. I'm trying to teach Faith City to really be Faith City. That our focus would stay on Jesus. No matter what's coming up in our lives. This morning I was praying. I said, Lord, I thank you because some things going on in our life. And I said, Lord, I thank you for the peace about it. I said, I'm just keeping my focus on you. I thank you and it is well. I said, Lord, I thank you because it is well. Are you listening to me? There's a, there's a peace that surpasses all understanding. You can't even understand it with your natural mind. This is why you need Holy Spirit. Say, look at Jesus. Look at this. What the next the verse says in 6 1, it says this. This up there, Hebrews 6 and 1. They put it up. All right, you about to put it up now, Hebrews 6 and 1. Because I want y'all to see this. I, I already read 5 and 14, but look at this. Y'all ready for that? You sure? Because it's gonna check you. Are you mature saints? In here. It said, therefore, it's up now. Therefore. Leaving the discussion of the elementary. Somebody say elementary. Not middle school, not high school. It say elementary, right? Everybody look at somebody else. Say, Does it say elementary? Make sure they all see it. So that means a small thing, right? How many kids in here in elementary school right now? Oh, they're in children's church. Yep, elementary. They little. Look how little they are. Elementary. Well, we got some high school students too, just as small as you. But elementary, right? And look what it says. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go into profession, not laying again the foundation of repentance from the dead works and of faith towards God. Oh, my God. So he said, us talking about faith towards God is elementary. But yet, y'all want the deep stuff. Signs, wonders, and miracles. And, and, and Hebrews writer said, we trying to get away from the elementary. We got to keep laying the foundation that you have in faith in God. Because you stop looking at Jesus. Jesus is not your focal point. He hasn't been in a long time for a lot of us. Don't worry, I've been there too. When I was a deacon, when I was a minister, when I was a pastor, still am a pastor. Oh, ain't that something? Then I took my focus off Jesus. Because you can get so busy doing the thing. You can be so busy doing ministry and preaching that you stop looking at Jesus. Then your faith start wavering. And now you're trying to build up your faith, but all you focus on is your faith. You forgot about Jesus. What do I mean by that? You forgot about the relationship. You just focus on trying to get your faith back, but you, you don't even want the relationship. I hear so many people always say to me, I just want to get back where I used to be. You shouldn't. You should want to get surpassed where you used to be. And the, the key to it is Jesus. Are y'all learning something here today? We have, we have to place value, our value and lack of value on everything that happens to us. That's why people go through the exact same thing but have different reactions. Everybody's been through a storm. Everybody's been through something. It ain't just your family. You don't know what I'm going The Bible said there's nothing new under the sun. I know you think yours is better or deeper or worse, but there's nothing new. There's a story worse than yours. There's somebody that's going through something tougher than you. But where's your lens depends on how you react to a thing. Some of you going to react to it like, oh, my God, I can't believe this has happened to me. Another you was like, okay, well, I'm just going to trust God. Hopefully he come through. And then the rest of you will laugh at it. See, I'm trying to get you to the point where you laugh at stuff. Y'all ain't received what I just said. That you laugh at stuff because you know where it's already taken care of. It's already finished. I'm already healed. I'm already blessed. I'm already head and not the tail. Above and not underneath. I don't care what comes up against me. We need to start laughing at stuff. 
Huh? I mean, some of you ain't laughed anyway. Some of you so so hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> man, laugh, Joe. Laugh, Joe. I'm about to say Joe. I can say that. Laugh, man. It's okay. Laugh, lady. Some of you just need to laugh. And when the enemy comes, laugh at him. Because it said, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a stand. Ain't that what the words say? Look to Jesus. He said it. I'm go- We're going to remove all the fear, all the doubt out of your life. You better receive that today. Because that's what the enemy does. He knows. He say, I don't want them to get out of this elementary stage. I want them to stay here. I want the pastor to keep preaching about faith every two months or every month because I, I'm, I'm, I don't really have faith because you stop looking at Jesus. That's the only problem, brother. That's the only problem, sister. You got to keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep it fixed. I mean, move everything out the way. I got a lot of stuff going on in my life. Well, I want you to just move it out the way for a moment and look at Jesus. That lady was going, pressing through the crowd. She said, if I could touch the hem of his garment, do you understand? She had an issue of blood. And do you understand? She could not go out in public. So she was, she was uh, uh, getting to a place that she could die. She didn't care. I am, I am almost at a place where if I go out here, she's saying, you got to know the story. You got to know the background. That I'm facing death if they catch me out here. But she didn't care. She said, if I can touch the hem of his garment, if I can just see Jesus, she wasn't focused on what they thought. She ain't th- focused on who may see her. She ain't even thinking about death or nothing else. All she saw was Jesus. She heard about him. She heard about what he did. This is why you got to stop frowning up at people's testimony. She heard about what he did here. She heard about what he did there. So if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. The satirical soldier, the same thing. I ain't got to go to your house. You ain't got to come to my house. I'm a man of authority. I understand. Come on, somebody. All you have to do is speak the word only. And my servant will be here. And Jesus was like, oh, my gosh. I haven't found the greater faith in, in the church. That's basically what he was saying. He said all of Israel, but he said the church. So it was a, a non-believer that believed Jesus. That's why I love when people first get saved. Because they'll be on fire for Jesus, but some of you that have been in church for a very long time, can I say it? You're stale now. You really got stale. You really got stale. Your praise is stale. Your prayer is stale. Everything about you is stale because you stopped looking at Jesus, and then you want to blame the church. You want to find another church, and you blame the church. It ain't the church. It ain't the church. You stale. You have, write it on the T-shirt, put it in your notes, you have became stale. It ain't the preaching. It ain't the music. It ain't nothing else. You stop focusing on Jesus. Listen to me. Because you focus on Jesus, it ain't the preaching. It ain't the music. It ain't the people. Because you're so focused on Jesus. Am I talking to anybody this morning? Look to Jesus. Woo! Come on, somebody. Y'all in the place today. Y'all ain't here. So it don't matter. I'm talking about real faith. I'm talking about the faith to keep your eyes on Jesus. Faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. See, that's what you messed up at. It's a good scripture. It's good. But if you change it a little bit, change the lens. Faith comes by hearing Jesus and continue hearing Jesus. It's, just, it's the same thing because he is the word. But see, we separate the word. From God, and they're the same. So when I, in the word, when this is preaching, I'm hearing about the Lord. I'm hearing about Jesus. Here we go, Matthew 7 and 24. How much time I got left? Take my time? All right, I, I got it, though. I got my time. Matthew 7 and 24. Thank you, Pop. He back there say, come on. I love it. How many believe Jesus? Do you believe what he says? says? Do you really? I mean, do you really, really? Do you really, 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 really? Matthew 7, 24 says this. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them. Here we go. Application. I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended. The floods came. And the winds blew. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. It rained. It flooded. And wind blown. They're going through three things right now. And it's beating on their house. And it did not fall. For it was founded on the rock. A lot of times things come up against us in this fall because you didn't listen to him. We didn't listen to him. Well, I know, I know, I know God loves me. 
And, you know, I know the word, but God's still dealing with my heart. No, you didn't listen to him. Just, just be honest. I believe I am where I am today with God because I'm very honest. I don't try to sugarcoat it. I don't try to say, Lord, still working on my heart. I don't do that because he already fixed my heart. He gave me a new spirit and new heart. It's just me. Come on. You'll be free if you just get this. I gave you revelation. It's nothing. It's just you. It's just me. I'm the one. Me, oh, Lord, <laughs> standing in and me, needing prayer. I'm like David. He said, Lord, me, me only have I sinned and done this thing. He ain't say Bathsheba shouldn't been out there showering. He ain't say that. Can I help y'all out today? Because that's what we do. That's what we do. He wasn't like, so it's the people, Lord, it's the people. No, David was like, no, 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 it was me. Me only have committed this sin. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Cast me not away from your presence. And restore the joy of my salvation. See, you ain't had joy in sal for salvation in a long time. But that's what he do. That's what we do. Lord, why is she out there taking a shower? She shouldn't have been out there. Come on, tell, tell the truth, y'all. Come on, tell the truth. You're going to get free if you be truthful. Lord, Lord, she shouldn't have been out there. She shouldn't have brushed up on me. Let's bring it nowadays. He shouldn't have took his shirt off. Lord, you know that's my weakness. No. Just take ownership of it. I'm just trying to help. Just take ownership. You're talking to Jesus. You're talking to God. And David said, it was just me only. I'm very honest with God. I'm very honest with my wife. I'm very honest with people. Even when I get in trouble. But you got to hear what he's saying. When he says something, don't make excuses. Just say, Lord, I didn't listen. Because that's what David did. Lord, I sinned. What's the difference? One did some crazy stuff and still was a king. And a man of the God's own heart, the Bible says. And then another one did crazy stuff too. But he denied his sin and blamed it on everybody else. One failed as king. One was still exalted as king. And they both sinned. And if you want to, you know, there's no levels to sin. They're all the same. But if you want to talk about levels. I mean, Saul did that one thing. You want to talk about David? Go and eat showbread. No, you ain't supposed to be doing that. Slept with Bathsheba. Put a husband in the front of the wall so he can die. Come on. He, he, did, he did things worse than him. But the difference is one was honest with God and the other tried to say that it was somebody else's fault. So what Jesus is saying here, if you listen to my sayings and be wise, no matter what come up against you, you know why it's this? You know why it is? Y'all want, want me to help y'all why this is? Because when he says something and you do it, he got to back it up. Y'all better hear. He has to. He has to. Because his reputation is on the line. When you don't listen and do what you want to do, he ain't got to. It ain't his reputation on the line. It's yours. If anybody listening to me today, so he said the wind can blow. Rain and flood and everything could come, but it won't fall. Because it was founded on the rock, who was Jesus. The difference was not storms, but rather the foundation. That's the problem with people. Their foundation is not in Jesus. It's not the storm. It's you don't have a good foundation. It's weak. Then he said, but everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. It's easier. It's faster to build on the sand. And the rain descended, the flood came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell. And they ain't say it just fell. And great was the fall. If, I mean, when we fall, we fall. Y'all listening today? We got to look at Jesus. He said, we look, we look not at the things which are seen, but the things that are not seen. For the things are seen are temporary. So that means everything that come up against you, you see, is a temporary thing. Am I helping anybody today?
Jesus said to them, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I wouldn't have said anything about it. I just paraphrased a little bit. But he said, let not your heart be troubled. Then he gave him the answer for a troubled heart, believing in God. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. He's telling you faith cure, a faith in Jesus. Faith in God cures a troubled heart. I'm telling you, this is, this is the way I live. I don't have a choice in the matter. I just trust him, deep. What do I have to lose? It's our, our, us not trusting him, not believing, having faith, that causes us not to win in life when you already won. And 2 Corinthians 4 and 7 says this. I love it. He says, but we have these treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. You got treasure, the light of God living on the inside of you. You know what that's saying? That's Christ living inside of you. Christ, the hope of glory. Then look what it says. Look what it says. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. Do you hear stuff coming up against you. You ain't, you ain't dead. You ain't crushed. See, some of you should come in here every, when you wake up in the morning, not just Sunday, you should just start praising God. The stuff you've been through, that you're still here today, still alive, still breathing. Say, we are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. That word trouble means like it's crowded, like, like, like you're under pressure. Somebody rubbed you the wrong way every day. Can you imagine? The distress, the anxiety, the mental suffering. Paul was saying, I'm constantly under pressure, but those pressures don't get inside of me. So just because things are going on, that don't, don't allow it to get inside. Because when it get inside, that's when that situation wins. Let it stay out there somewhere, but don't let it get in your heart. Don't let it get inside you. We can't keep every problem from coming, but we can stop it from getting on the inside. People will never know things that we have been through, my wife and I, my family and our life. You'll never know because you'll never see it. I don't let it get in the inside. It's not going to change my character. It's not going to change how I love people. It's not going to change me being happy and, and joy. It's never going to do that because it's never going to win. Because I'm going to look at Jesus. Be like, what's up, pops? Y'all laugh. You can call him what you want to call him. He's our father. I'll be father. What's up? I know you got this. What I'm worrying about it for. You know when I worry about it? When I think I got to handle it. That's when it gets tough. Imagine this big old thing they told you about, whatever it is, at work, doctor, whatever, and you, and you got to face it by yourself. Ain't nobody. Nobody's going to have faith for that. How? You don't even understand what they're saying. And God forbid. You use Dr. Google. You got everything in the world. Yeah, I'm going to free you today. But some of you need to stop Googling. You have everything in the world you Google. Then it gets in your mind. Then you go tell somebody, you know what, I looked at Google and they say it may be this. Stop! And you know what some of your friends will say when they do that? I looked at Google and they said this. And I looked at Bible and it said this. Well, we can't do that. I looked at this scripture and this is what this said. This scripture says this. I don't know about Google, but Jesus said this. Jesus said by his stripes, we already healed. This was said this. Jesus said, I'm blessed in the city and blessed in the field. I know what you said. The letter came out about your job. But Jesus said. 
He just ain't saying he put his life on the line. He died for it. Ah, persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. One of the things about persecution that happened is you could think, <laughs> you could thank God forsake you. That's one of the greatest tricks of the enemy, making you feel that God has forsaken you. I don't care what you've been through, what sin you committed. He loves you. Did you hear what I said? No matter your lifestyle, whatever, he loves you. He don't like what we do. Some of the things we do, he don't like, but he still loves you. And don't let no preacher, nobody tell you that he doesn't. See, God doesn't hate people. He hates sin. Hated sin so much that he punished his own son. So you won't be. Did you hear what I just said? He hates sin so much he punished his son, Jesus, so you don't have to get punished for your sin. Could you, can you imagine you getting punished for the stuff you do? I'd be dead like a long time ago. I don't think I would have made it to 18. Probably, no, nah, probably not 16, to be honest with you. Just think about that. But Jesus said, God said, no, 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 no. For God so loved the world, he gave his son. He's going to give him to you as a sacrifice. And all your sins, past, present, future sins, and your sickness, and your disease, everything that you'll come up, in, come up against in this world, I'm putting on Jesus, putting on the cross. He's going to die, take it to the hell in the grave, and get back up. And sit on the right hand of the Father. So if that's the case, why we deal with it? Because it's still in the earth realm. But you're not of this world. So you keep being attached to it. You got benefits of being a believer. How much time I got left? All right, a couple more minutes. Go to Mark 11 and 12. And then I'm going to get you all out of here so you can go eat. Because a lot of church people on Sunday don't eat breakfast before you get here. That's why they be so hungry at the church, be flying out of here. <clears throat> then we got to do a healing line because y'all be eating crazy. Pound cake, macaroni cheese with 20 sticks of butter. They mad at me now. Let me, let me, let me not talk about that mac and cheese. Tell my wife, I don't want it no more. I'm tired of it. I'm sick of it. Every little meal we have, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Sunday dinner, mac and cheese, this always got to show up. Why? Why? Mac and cheese, sweet potatoes, why? Greens, no, we're going to keep the greens, healthy. All that sugar y'all be pouring in that uh, sweet potatoes. Look at my mother. Look at it. They don't want me to preach about this. We don't want to preach about health. Stay the faith, preacher. Stay at faith. We're not talking about healthy food and crumble cookies and sweet potato pie. Mm, 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 mm. Then we need prayer for diabetes because, you know, eating all that crazy stuff. Anyway, Mark 11 and 12. I, I felt y'all praying against me, so I'm going to stay here. My wife the other day was like, man. Oh, no, that was yesterday when you think about eating that banana pudding. She wanted that banana pudding so bad. Just go ahead and get the anime. Just get, just get, the, just get the banana pudding. This is important what I want to share with you, so lock in right here. Mark eleven twelve says, Now the next day when he had come out from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, Jesus speaking to the fig tree, y'all. Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. See, you know why Jesus had a problem with this? The type of fig tree that grows in Jerusalem produces figs before it produces leaves. So Jesus had a problem because it was acting out of order. It had the leaves, but it didn't have the figs. See, the figs comes before the leaves. So that's why when he saw the leaves, he just automatically thought there was figs on it. Y'all better listen to this word here. 
So Jesus went to the tree. He's like, let me go get some figs because he saw the leaves. But then the leaves were on there with no figs. So he's acting out of order. It did not act as the order that it should be from the beginning when Jesus said, when God said, let there be light and all the trees and the earth grow. It, it, it was dysfunction. Oh, yeah, you missing what I'm saying. So everything that does not that is not in agreement with God's word to come up against you, you have a right to curse it. Did y'all hear what I said? I'm talking to the wrong people today, the right people, left side, middle. I don't know where we at. If Jesus went up and cursed the fig tree, he said it got leaves, but where's the figs? Because I designed it to grow figs first, then leaves. And because it didn't do what God designed it to do, I got a curse. It can't live here. He said, no man can take fruit of this tree any longer. In verse 11, it said, now in the morning as they passed by, 11 and 20, it passed by, saw the fig tree dried up from the root. Mark gave the answer when he said it was dried up from the roots. When Jesus cursed, it is already dead. It was already dying. But they couldn't see that it died. So that's why they was in amazement that it was gone the next day. Because when Jesus cursed it and told it to die, they, seen, they saw it st still living. Well, if God cursed it, why is it still living? So when they go the next day and saw it dead, it didn't make sense. Why is it gone? Because when you cursed it, it wasn't gone. It was still there. Because when he first cursed it, it started dying from the root of the thing. See, your problem why you're not believing God is you're a curse a thing and rebuke a thing, but you still see it standing. But your faith got to still stay in and be locked in and say, I know it's still standing, but it's dying at the root of the thing. That's why you got to start cursing stuff and say, God, I praise you and I thank you because I know it's dying at the root of it. You don't want it to die on top because then if it's still in the root, then it's going to go right back. Am I talking to anybody today? That's why Peter, remember, said, and Rabbi, look, the fig tree, you curse as withered away. And Jesus, as it says, have faith in God. That's his answer. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. That means everything that come up against you is a mountain. And does not doubt in his heart but believes that those things he says will be done. And I love it. He will have whatever he's saying. Whatever he says he's going to have. I don't have time to go in and finish this, but Jesus was explaining how faith works on the fig tree. Anyone who uses faith will get the way Jesus did get the same results. You speak to a thing. Your problem is when a storm comes and things come up against you, you talk to Jesus about it. Did Jesus talk to God about the fig tree? No, he spoke to the fig tree. So whatever come up against you with your faith feel, Holy Ghost feel self, you need to speak to the thing. See, you talk to God about it and God saying, yo, you speak to it. Say, you speak to the mountain and it shall be removed. We got to start. Looking at Jesus and keeping our eyes on Jesus again. This is complete faith. We're trying to grow faith without Jesus. Who is the author and the finisher of our faith. I'm going to tell you guys something. I don't care what you're going through, a family member going through, or anything of that, that nature. You better start operating by faith. You speak to the thing. You speak to the disease. You call it by name. Jesus spoke to the fig tree. He said he answered it. Come on, somebody. And said to it, meaning the fig tree responded in a way. And Jesus had to speak to it. There's some things speaking to you, and you ain't never speak to it. you just been allowing it to say things to you and dominate your life. But you ain't say nothing to it. You need to start standing up at your spirit filled self. You are a child of the living God. Your daddy is like that. Come on, come on. And we got to start looking at Jesus. No matter the situation, no matter what come up against you, keep your eyes on Jesus.